Hello! In this video I will demonstrate visual workflow automation from Effector. My name is Peter Schneider and I'm working at Effector. I will be showing you first how to design a workflow. And I will use the example of automating access management, such as granting a user a new permission to access a digital service. The goal of this workflow is to automate the access management to a degree that no service desk person is involved in the access right request. And what you see here is the workflow designer canvas, where in the center you have the actual workflow sequence. On the left hand side you see all the automation components that we're offering out of the box. And on the right hand side you see the workflow selection criteria, which decides when a workflow is triggered for a particular process. I'm triggering this workflow whenever there is a new service request and the service item is a user access request. Uh, it is possible to define as much workflows as you want for a particular template. It's naturally also good to define when the workflow should be terminated in case something goes wrong or the service request should be cancelled. Next, let's start designing the workflow sequence itself. The workflow sequence itself consists always of a start and an end point. And after that you just drag and drop the workflow elements that you need, such as an approval for the access right request, the actual orchestration node that orchestrates the AD update, then then you can add a little script that randomizes, for example, feedback management. Let's take next a condition that checks whether the, the random condition is, is met and whether the customer should get a feedback request or not. Then we send the email notification asking for feedback from the customer. And alternatively, we can just send a notification that the service request has been completed to the user. Let's take next a timer that waits for a certain time whether the user has uh, given feedback and another small script that counts how often we have reminded the user already to give feedback. Then we add the rollback condition just in, in case the customer that hasn't given his feedback yet and then we are adding the actual feedback reminder email to the workflow sequence and connecting it to the rollback condition and then back into the loop in front of the timer waiting yet again before checking whether the customer has sent the feedback now. Finally we add a condition that allows us to escalate a certain situation in case, for example, the feedback is extremely negative. And in that case, for example, we can inform the vendor manager or the service manager that the negative feedback was received. Uh, but if the feedback is positive or neutral, then we can, of course, directly close the workflow. The workflow is done also in a responsive UI design, so we can drag, drop items on the canvas and zoom in and zoom out. So now I'm adding the rejection email to it in case the service request was not approved. Add another endpoint to it. Next I'm adding a workflow node to the sequence that creates a new data card and therefore triggers a, a sub-workflow or triggers a new, a new sub-process such as creating an incident in case of the exception that the orchestration fails. For example, if the AD is not available, then I clean up a little bit the, the workflow and connect the missing points towards the endpoints. Add yet another endpoint to it in case the orchestration failed and the service desk needs to manually check why the orchestration hasn't been positive. And even less than two minutes. My workflow essentially is ready and designed. Now when the workflow is designed, I can start configuring the different workflow elements. I'll start with 
configuring the approval node. Like every other node, the node always has a particular name that helps you to understand the process. Next, I can set whether I want to do the approval through the self-service portal or on the service management tool. And then I can choose to select the approver, either a dynamically chosen one based on the relationship of the template, such as here, for whom has this re access right request requested for and the manager of it. And like in every other workflow node, I can update any attribute in the template and its value. And here, for example, I update just to simply the statuses to move the process along. I'm also able to create a group of approvers, for example, here picking a dedicated approver. And at that moment, I get the choice whether I want to complete the approval when the first one responds or only when everybody has responded. The next orchestration node is essentially the core of the whole access management orchestration. It's an orchestration node that allows to manipulate the data in external systems. And in this one case, I can manipulate, for example, the access rights permissions stored in effect identity management. So I'll pick the system which I want to orchestrate and then what action I want to do, such as here, add a role. Then I pick for whom it is requested for, what's the person it is supposed to orchestrate, and where to find the role that is supposed to be given to that user. With that one, essentially, I'm already good and can move the status of the service request forward to be in implementation. Next, I will show you how to add scripts to the visual workflow. Um, no workflow is any good without the ability to create flexible scripts within the process. So Effectus Visual Workflow Engine allows you to add Python scripts to the workflow. For example, in this one, a simple wor workflow node that randomizes feedback by calculating a random number. So you only have to add the, the Python script and definitely at the end define when is the workflow node supposed to be completed. However, my Python script times are uh, long gone, so I will not write this Python script myself, but instead I'll, I'll pick one from our uh, library of workflow nodes. So I will import a pre-manufactured node from our library, uh, which essentially is doing the creation of a random node. So I'll pick from the library uh, a note, ready-made node with a script that will do exactly that for me and uh, that one has then the particular Python script involved that, that creates a random number between 1 and 5. The ability to export and import workflow nodes naturally helps me to reuse existing work. Now, after showing you one of the most complex workflow nodes, such as creating scripts, let me show you one of the easiest automation nodes, which is the if-then condition. In this condition, we are deciding whether to send a feedback request or not based on the random number we created earlier in the script. So this condition will be essentially only asking whether the random number created is, is 5 or anything else, which essentially leads to the, to the result that only every fifth service request in average, will get a feedback request. Automating processes are of course great, but naturally we need to keep the rest of the world informed of what's going on with the service request. And therefore, email notifications or any notifications are essentially for every workflow process. And we can send emails uh, either as, as plain text or in HTML format. We can then define to whom this message should go who should be in CC or BCC, and we can decide dynamically based on the attributes and the relationships in the template to whom this email should go. For example, here to the person it has been requested for, and also in the subject and in the body message of the, of the email, we can add then dynamically values from any attribute of the workflow, and the workflow node will give me easily 
suggestions of which attributes are existing and in order to make it easy to define the dynamically chosen values. Last but not least, let me show you how to initiate an, a new workflow in a different template or to create a sub-workflow. And this is done with a node called Create New Data Card. This essentially creates a new process that can run in parallel or can be kicked off at the end of an existing workflow. And in order to do so, I'll pick which template this sub-process will be running on. This could be, for example, even a Again, uh, the same template that the current workflow is running on. I'll need to pick in which folder this uh, data will be stored. And uh, then I can start uh, setting the values, including the mandatory values of this new data card. And I can map values from the current workflow to the new process and get going with kicking off that new sub process. If I wanted to, I could also set down a new uh, conditional workflow node at the end of the, the workflow that waits for this sub-workflow to be completed. But in today's example, I will just kick off that new process and complete the workflow with that. For the benefit of time, I won't be showing you how to configure the other nodes now. The configuration works essentially in the same way than previously shown in this video. But I want to show you shortly how to document your workflows. What you can do in, in effect is essentially export the workflow sequence with its description to a PDF file that allows you to store the process documentation. Here you can also see the, the export and importing of workflows in case you want to move them to different different production or test machines. But once you have created the final workflow, you can just export it to PDF and you're ready to go and you don't need a separate business process modeling notation tool to draw your visual workflows. This completes the short demonstration of Effector's visual workflow automation. If you want to know more about Effector, and its solutions, don't hesitate to contact us or check out our webpage at www.effector.com. Thank you for your interest and until next time.